Okay, so the objective of this video is to help users understand how to work with a material that we may want to run horizontally in one instance and vertically in another. Hopefully some of the things you see here can benefit you in other aspects of working with materials in Revit. So to begin with, we've got these, we've got a generic wall type 8 inches here, but I need to do clapboard siding. There's already clapboard siding material in Revit, but I want to show you what you may need to do to get things to look right both from a graphical point of view which means elevation sections typical construction document 2d orthographic view as well as for render appearance okay so what we'll do here is I'm going to take this generic 8 inch wall I'm going to duplicate it twice first time I duplicate it here I'm going to call this uh, 6 inch clapboard or horizontal clapboard sighting horizontal clap board sighting and we'll add a a, uh, a stud to it as well but just make it very basic click OK and we'll duplicate it again and there's going to be a vertical clapboard sighting type as well All right so let's go back to the horizontal clapboard sighting and we'll edit the structure and first of all for the structural material you know, we're going to do something like uh, lumber and we'll just use that for now and it'll be 6 inches, 5.5 here. Okay, and then on the exterior layer, insert a layer for the exterior. And again, if you're not used to working with walls, the number indicates its wrapping priority. So we want that to be a little bit higher maybe than the uh, number 5 uh, function. And then for the material here, we're going to use the clapboard siding. This is where it gets a little bit interesting. So I'm going to type in clapboard. It's not currently loaded in my project. I'll go ahead and load it in there. So there we go, we got the siding clapboard material. And again, we're working with a horizontal clapboard. So in this case, let's go ahead and specify a surface pattern here. It's going to be a model pattern because we want this to potentially look okay in both a 2D view and a 3D view. So, and we'll pick the six inch parallel here because it's running the right way. And we'll click OK and hit apply here. And one more thing here under appearance, you know, choose the appropriate material. We'll leave this as the the aspect or the asset to be assigned to the appearance um, a tab. And I think everything else is pretty much okay. This is the way we're going to have it render. Right, so this will be the easy one. And let's give that a thickness of an inch. And click OK. And click OK here. And hopefully when we're done, and I might have changed the orientation. Let's change the wall orientation and see if that looks right. No, it was the other way around. Chain walls orientation. And we may need to go to hidden line here to see that. OK, so there's your, your pattern, which again, this is going to show up in your section views with that. And then if you switch over to realistic, you know, we have our nice little clapboard with the little kind of bump, real, little relief going on there to give it a little bit more realistic appearance. Okay, so that's that. That's that part of it. Now, coming around, we want to do vertical sighting at this point. So let's let's do that. I'm going to select this and we'll change out the type to the vertical type. And let's edit that, change the structure here. Probably should have just duplicated the other one, right? So let's just do it the right way here. So we'll go ahead and just select this here, put it back to clapboards, the horizontal, and I'm going to go into PropShake Browser, go ahead and delete that family. Wall, basic wall, and let's get rid of this one. So we'll delete that, the vertical, and then we'll just duplicate the, the horizontal because it's going to be much easier to do that. I type, duplicate vertical because we'll have our structure already set up for us. Vertical siding. And then go into the edit. And we're going to now work with a different material. So let's cl click on this. And uh, let's go ahead and rename this one. So it says siding clapboard horizontal. And then we'll duplicate the material. It needs to reference a different material here. And we'll call this siding clapboard vertical. Once that's done, we need to adjust the surface pattern. So 
if I don't have a vertical six inch pattern, which I don't believe I do, what I'll do is I'll create a new one. And again, it needs to be model fill pattern. And we'll call this six inch vertical. Line angle is going to be 90 degrees, and the line spacing is going to be six inches. And I'll click OK and click OK here. Let's not go too far before we kind of move forward here. And if we switch back to a hidden line view, we should see you know the differences between the two. Here's the vertical, there's the horizontal. Okay, now here comes the little bit more com complicated part. We need to edit the material. So I'm going to, so to do so, we're gonna edit that material. You can do this a couple ways. I'll, we'll just go through the wall type here and the structure. So we're gonna edit this material and we've got the surface pattern already established, but now it's the appearance. And these appearances, uh, they use the appearance tab uses an asset. That's what it's called. And right now the asset's being used by one other uh, material besides this one. And that's of course the clapboard siding horizontal. Okay, so we really need to have a different asset for this. We need to adjust this. So what we'll do here, we're gonna duplicate this asset. And we probably want to rename that. We can go under information and do that. So beige, we'll call it vertical six inch beige. And apply. There we go. So just a name change at this point, but we've now got a different asset. So we're not going to change the other one. That's the key here. We don't want to adjust the asset for both of those wall types because both of them were using the same one. Okay, so now we've got that. Then we need to adjust here the uh, the, Im uh, the image, the mat that is being applied. I think the easiest way to do this, and especially since we're doing, we're going to need to do both the bump and the just ge generic mat that is being applied, is to actually click on this. We're going to do a little save as here, and we'll call it page 90. Okay, and click open. Oops, not open. We just need to save as. Sorry. I'll do a little copy here. Let's do that again. And take this one, I believe it is. Okay, right click here, select it, copy, and then we'll paste it right here. And let's find that guy. It's gonna have the latest date. Okay, and where was that? Okay, I just kind of cut something out there so that way we wouldn't have to watch me look for it. So I'm going to rename this. Instead of calling it copy, we'll call it beige and then period 90. Enter. And then let's just find that again using wildcards because there's a lot of them in there. There it is. Okay, go ahead and hit open. And we're going to cancel here because we're actually going to edit that real quickly in uh, paint so I'm just going to click OK because and the reason why we're editing it we could turn it on its using the tools inside of Revit but we also want the bump to be effective so I think it's just going to be easier doing it that way okay so what we'll do here is we'll just go ahead and copy it or edit it and we'll find out what program it gives us here so there it is and let's uh, with this this newly saved mat Let's rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, so it's running vertically. And let's save this. Okay, we'll close out of here. And then once that's been saved, let's go ahead and bring it in. Make sure that we're using the 90 instead of the Okay, click there, open. Okay, one second must not have actually affected the change. So let's go ahead and edit that again. Okay, it looks like it was changed. Save it. Okay, make sure it's done a couple times here. And then, Okay, I think I did change it, but it, the preview doesn't reflect that, so that's okay. So again, select it after you've edited it in Paint or whatever, and then click on the preview here. And yes, it's running vertically. Okay, go ahead and click Done. And if we just click OK at this point, 
is where you can get yourself into a little bit of trouble. Click OK and then change the appearance here to realistic. You'll find that you get this kind of cross pattern going on and that's because there's a bump being applied to that. So we need to either remove the bump or have the bump be the same uh, image file. So again, go back into your structure and by the way I've been going through this route but you could go straight to manage materials find that material in this case the flatboard vertical go to appearance and then under bump either remove it or you know select the other source in this case the 90 right there click OK hit done hit apply hit OK and then you should have the nice vertical bump all right. Now, for those of you who is o who are only interested in that aspect of materials, you can bow out now of this video. But there was one user that I was talking to that really wanted to see this stacked. So that just requires building a stacked wall type. Now that we've got the two basic wall types established, so to do so, I'm going to create a new stacked wall. We'll duplicate an existing one. That's the way you create new types here in Revit. And once we have the new type, we'll go ahead and rename it, and we'll call it uh, clapboard uh, vertical and horizontal. Okay, so basically here in this, the type properties, we want to edit the structure such that, and define whatever you want as far as the the heights. But for the uh, the vertical, I believe the user requested this to be 16 feet. And then if we're building a 20 feet wall, we'll just keep this variable and make sure that that is the other, uh, that is the horizontal clapboard sighting. All right. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Click OK here. And then when we go ahead and say, yeah, this needs to be that stacked wall type. Let's browse here, find our stacked wall. And we should have then our stacked wall type. It looks okay here in the, the rendered appearance. Um, it looks okay when we do a hidden line, you know, or should we, you know, that transition, that's up to you whether that's a big deal or not. And then under the, um, the elevation view, which this would be the south elevation, I believe, of this project, go into here and then you've got your, your two uh, walls coming together. Okay, so hopefully that helps you understand the basic process with editing materials, uh, especially uh, when it comes to adjusting material that may be at the, uh, you may need to duplicate it or it is already at the wrong angle. Okay, that's all.